Okay, everybody, it's me, Dr. Q, and I am here to do just a one-on-one -on -one training session with Rowan, who's over here, and also all the other horses are around, so I'll just have you watch and see what I do. We're going to work on getting in the tree. So she was coming, but then she forgot I had a pan of grain in there, so that looks pretty interesting. So she stopped part way, and that's okay, because I'm just going to use the opportunity to do what I call change the frame. While I'm giving that black mare a moment to decide how she feels about getting into the trailer, I thought I would give you a real life example of one of my students who is having more success than I was with trailer loading this young Mustang. And this is what this process looks like. You're gonna do this a few times and then you'll be able to get the behavior. So I teach that in my horse training masterclass how to quickly change the frame. So that's how we change the frame from working on trailering to just going ahead and getting a grooming session done. So notice that she is free. Come or go if she would like. And also I wanna show you our audience. So let's, since she was following me, let's see if I can keep getting her to follow me. One thing that I can use that will help. So as long as she's moving, I'm moving. So since horse training can be kind of slow, I thought I would interject here with another example of our next time of trailer loading this little filly. I'm very happy with that, so that's no problem. Now let's just wait and see how relaxed she stays, right? Does she get nervous about um, coming further in? So um, again, the, you would do this with any horse, whether it's their first time or whether it is um, their first time after a year off. And so winter time, if you have the ability to do it, is a good time to practice when we can't get out there and do a bunch of other things. And so here we are uh, doing some trailer loading practice with this beautiful thoroughbred Frisian mare, Rowan. Time to eat a lot of that grain, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't push her forward a little bit further. So notice I was doing what I call a push-pull, right, in that one. So that was a push and a pull. My push was bopping up inside that horse trailer. So why did I do that? Well, it's kind of desensitizing her um, because what we don't want is to make also the entrance to the trailer be like super like spooky, like oh. Like, I don't want to be there, right? We don't want that. You know, she's walking around, she's making up her mind. I'm pretty prepared over here uh, with lots of grain and she'll be back in just a minute. You watch. Did it. Okay, so I used a lot of different psychological things there. Um, so I not only um, I kept dancing with her. I don't know if you noticed that or not. She kind of came, I sort of came back to her. She sort of came forward. I came a little bit more forward, constantly kind of reeling her in like a fly fishing expedition, something like that. And I ended up making sure that I have all the tools that I need at the end of that journey to reward her for that dance with me. And so that's that grain. And so not only was she um, still a little reluctant about coming forward to get that grain, so then I increased my likelihood of having a good outcome by offering a grain to another horse, especially a horse that's lower on the totem pole than her. So then not only do I have her thinking about, oh, I want to satisfy my craving for food, but also I want to satisfy my craving for 
establishing and reinforcing my dominance hierarchy, right? So it's very, very important and a component that you always want to be reinforcing your horse's hierarchy. So um, they decide who's boss in the field and it's your job to respect their decision and not to try to override that in any way, but instead use it to your advantage. You can use um, a more aggressive horse to protect you um, from a horse that is possibly trying to injure you or being too rough with your personal space. Um, so there's different ways that you can go about actually utilizing that um, for different kinds of training. Now I'm going to move forward to the next thing. And so notice she didn't really care for that too much. I did um, kind of push myself into that space in between her and the fence, which maybe wasn't the best thing to do. I didn't need to do that. So maybe that's what made her say, oh, I don't really want you to pet me anymore. But remember, there's still grain in here. Okay, so I lose. She pooped. I didn't get to see it, so I don't know if that was a stress poop or if she just actually had to poop. Probably a stress poop, considering we have all these horses around and all this is happening. I'll show you one more time. Chili, Dixie, Oliver, Caesar, Blazy, of course, our beautiful Rowan. And back there in the background, we have Natalia, who's checking out something up in the woods there. But whenever we get a problem like this, And that problem is a big steaming pile of poo. That tells me that I'm um, probably a good place to go ahead and just stop the lesson for today. Um, stopping it on a positive note. Um, she's still here, so even though she pooped, she's still by me. She did just walk off. Part of that is because she's getting full. Um, and also maybe she's just getting anxious, but whenever they do a stress poop like that, that's definitely a time that you want to stop and reassess what you're doing and, and make sure that you are not stressing your horse out too much. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. And so you always, always, always want to end on a positive note. So even though um, she did get a little bit stressed enough to do that little poop, she's not so stressed that to not come and be with me again. these guys to influence her behavior. Okay, so now she's back to eat grazing and eating her grain at the trailer. She went in there by herself and she did a big... <gasps> So I get an A plus for that, even though I already flunked because of the poop. But that's enough for now. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. But this is how you get started um, with retraining or training a fearful horse to come into the horse trailer for the first time. Always have several things to work on. Have your push and your pull. Have your as different tools you want to have ready to go. Your treats, your food. Be prepped, ready to go. And have an amazing session. And on that note, I'm Dr. Q, here to help you. I've helped thousands of people overcome all of their training issues with their horses, and I can help you too. So don't forget to subscribe down below, check out my horse training masterclass, and we'll see you right here in the next video. And don't forget to tune into next week's video where we're gonna show you all the updates that we've made to the Rescue Ranch over all of 2024. Thank you so much for all of your donations and support. God bless.